Pug lights made by two different manufacturers. This first one has a red positive cable on the back and a black and red negative cable on the back. So that really matches our current system and all the other DC uh, direct current uh, systems that we have in the van. Uh, this one on the other hand has a white negative cable and a black positive cable. So this has a little sticker on it to tell it is positive uh, but just to make sure I don't make any mistakes when I'm taking lights in and out is I put a little bit of red heat shrink on the end here just to tell me that's a positive and I'll do the same I'll put a little bit of black heat shrink on the on the back there just to tell me that that's the negative um, other than that they're very similar uh, so they both consume uh, two and a half watts uh, and they look very attractive uh, the profiles are slightly different one has a profile of 10 millimeters the other has a profile of 12 millimeters now let's join them together. These are the components I'll be using in my circuit and I'll leave the links below. In this video we'll be looking at wiring up uh, six putt lights in parallel uh, with a toggle switch that can be illuminated. If however you don't want your switch to be illuminated, uh, simply disconnect the earth going back to the battery and you have a functioning toggle switch that won't be illuminated. Later in the video, I'll introduce the bus bar and in future videos, we'll look at dimmer switches, two-way switches and the control panel. But let's get back to the workshop and wire up a switch. So in, in the beginning, it can be quite difficult to work out exactly where you want the lights to go or where do you want the switch. Um, do you want a dimmer switch incorporated into the system as well? So what I do is I use these temporary uh, cable blocks and they're really good they just snap off and then you can pop the ca cable through screw them up with a small screwdriver and they're excellent as a temporary measure they're not waterproof um, so once I've decided or determined where they're going to go then I use this spade and heat shrink cover on my fitting so I'm going to show you how to put these together. They're really quite easy. They take a little bit longer to do, uh, but they do offer a better water resistance. So the sleeve just goes onto the cable first. Tidy up the ends. On the crimping tool that I'm using, I have a slightly wider part here than here. So this is narrower just there. So with the spade fitting, what I do is I pop that into there like that and just lodge it so it's carefully balanced. So the back, the back of the spade goes to the back of the tool into that wider section. All right. Then I can push the cable into the there and you can see that I'm crimping a little bit of the cable at the back as well. And then just pull down and you'll end up with a really professional looking crimp there and it's that easy okay now all you have to do now is bring your sleeve over and you have a really really nice looking professional finish to your fitting So now I want to put a switch into our lighting circuit. I bought these on Amazon. I'll leave the link below. They come with three terminals on the back. Uh, one, two, three. And this terminal, the golden one or the brass colored one, uh, that will take the earth or the negative. Uh, and these two will take the live wires. They will be red in the UK and this one will be black. Very easy to wire up. And we'll do that right now. Connected up a red cable. So a live feed to feed that middle terminal on my switch. Pop the middle one on, so we now have power to the switch, and that bottom red one, power to the lights, and then that top one will be the ground or the earth going back to the battery. Pop my fuse in, and now have lights.
that I can modify it if I want to. And if you know, I do have a blue lamp on the front there. If you don't want the blue lamp, just disconnect the earth and the blue lamp will disappear. Uh, personally, I like to have it on. This particular switch, we will put in some additional switches into the system in a later video. They're really quite bright. So on this side of my test jig, I have these lights wired up in parallel and these in series. Uh, it's a simpler wiring circuit. So if you look, at the same thing, the, the live wire is coming out of the fuse box to the middle of the switch again. And then from the outside, this live wire is going to the light. This time, the negative wire is coming out and is connected to the positive of the next light and so on. So they in a daisy chain and there's no parallel. So they are in a straight line. So if one light fails, they all fail. Uh, now to illustrate what the lights look like, uh, we're gonna turn the lights off in a moment. I just turn them on and that is now on. Uh, you see the difference with parallel. There you go. Uh, but just to show you that they are actually on, uh, we just turn the lights off. They are really dim. Um, and it's not the case that they get dimmer and dimmer. They are all at the same level of dimness, if that makes any sense. In the case of puck lights, the amount of dimness is actually the same throughout the whole circuit. Um, it's not a very good one to use on the camper van. So, if we just turn my other lights on for a moment. And that's why I don't recommend wiring up in series on your camper van. However, it is a good opportunity to show you what voltage drop can look like. I've now connected up the third uh, and we're going to turn the lights on now just to show you how dim they are. And that is with the lights off and you really do. They are on, uh, they are most definitely on. Uh, but they are so dim, they're almost uh, in, you can't see them. Uh, just to illustrate what voltage drop does look like, we're going to compare our parallel and series system. So with our multimeter set on voltage, I'm just going to put on the fuse box, we've got 12.4 on input of the first light, we've got 12.3 site voltage after the switch, second light, We've got 12.3 and on the third light, 12.33. So no voltage drop between the lights, some at the beginning, but other than that, they're all receiving the same amount of voltage. On the series, however, we start the same. So it's 12.44. After the first light, it's now dropped to 6.96 and after the second light it drops further to 1.80 so you can see the progressive drop in voltage in the series so this is not a very efficient way of lighting your van to stick to parallel Put lights are not difficult to wire up uh, I've got a live feed coming from my fuse box to my switch, which I'll show you how to wire up. Then here's the, the live cable coming from the switch. There's the live cable from the putt light. We just join these two together, live to live. And I'm just going to use a temporary fitting. So once I know where these are going to be situated in the van, I use a more permanent method of fixing my cables. Just do it up lightly. And then the live wire from the next putt light, I just connect in the other end of my temporary fitting. Pop it in there. And that's it. So in my next one, again, it's a live wire from the putt light 
to the red cable and then from the next one and the next one and the next one and so on. So the golden rule, red cable to red cable or live to live. And on the return or the negative which is going back to the battery I've got my negative white cable coming out of the puck light with a piece of black heat shrink on uh, and that gets connected to another little temporary block and then another black cable all the way back to the battery and that's it and that's how you connect your puck lights up I hope you found the video informative and if you did would you please give me a thumbs up in the next video we'll be looking at dimmer switches and two-way switches thank you for watching and there you have it